Hello, hello, hello. I am practitioner Jay, and uh, I'm going to give you a continuation of last week's class or my previous class on um, marriage tips um, and techniques. And this is a beneficial class, regardless if you're married or not. I always like to start my uh, classes with a corny dad joke, and here's is today's. If you fear Christmas and were locked in a room with Santa, what would you have? You would have claws, terphobia. But on boom. All right, let me um. Just pin me. All right. All right. I hope you didn't think my uh, my my dad joke was too corny. Anyways, uh, I always like to start my class also with two deep healing breaths. So in through the nose, out through the mouth. Preferably with your eyes closed, but however you feel safe. All right. As I was saying last uh, class, I talked about... Um, tips on relationships and marriage because um, many uh, of you watching or that are going to watch have uh, are either preparing for marriage, uh, remarrying, reconciling, rebuilding after broken trust, getting back into the relationship game or what have you. And if you have no uh, thoughts or desire or ever do decide to get into any relationship or marriage in the future, the more you know, um, uh, the more you have in your toolbox to share with others. So again, this was um, a uh, poll that was taken on, um, I, be I believe it was with 100 couples or 100 professionals on what really worked for their relationship. Um, okay, so I'm going to continue on from my previous class. And the next one was enforcing uh, consistent consequences. Now, a lot of you watching are, um, you know, don't have children anymore, um, and they're certainly not younger. But for those that that are watching now or in the future, if you do have children, one of the key factors is ra in raising children um, is not only to be on the same page, but also be consistent with consequences. Um, you know, I, I hear parents all the time, like counting, you know, do this one, two, three, that's, you know, that's fine. Counting is nice. Um, giving chances are nice. Um, but consistency is absolutely key. Keep in mind, a child's job is to continually push boundaries and a parent's job is to continually, um, rein them in. All right, next is agreeing to set firm boundaries with in-laws. You know, this one can be tricky because everybody has a different family dynamic. For instance, my mother was raised in a family where you didn't come out of your bedroom until you had you were fully clothed and you had socks and shoes on. My father was raised in a family where when you were in the bathroom, you left the door open. That anybody can come in, brush their teeth while somebody was taking a bath. I mean, it was a... So they really had to um, have serious talks about, you know, what is comfortable in this marriage because they came from two different worlds. Um, so just uh, being on the same page and, of course, in all areas of every relationship, it's compromise, negotiate, negotiation um, and sacrifice. Uh, the next one was agreeing to follow a budget. And this could be... Uh, tough again because um some people are savers some people are spenders and you have everybody on the spectrum i'm one of those people that like to spend if i have ten dollars in my bank account i will write a check for 20 um and then deal with the consequences so um really uh setting firm boundaries um as far as your budget and your budget expectations is crucial just so you're on the same page um, many, one of the top three reasons couples argue is because of money. So this is something that really has, to, should be hashed out, um, early on. And of course, you know, it gets organically ironed out as you continue. 
Um, sticking to screen time limits. I'm not even talking about kids. I'm talking about one another. How many times are there couples where even if they're in the same room, watching a movie, talking, one is scrolling on social media. I heard one time that social media is wonderful because it brings people that are far near and that's great. Sadly, however, it also brings people that are near far even around the holidays, I noticed, you know, my guests came to, you know, this is family that haven't seen each other in months and months, maybe even a year, a couple of years. And initially everybody's hugging and good to see you and yada, yada. And within a few hours, everybody's in my living room on their phones. And I'm thinking, whoa, which by the way, I pulled out some games and, and we all did some connecting things, but that's, that's the society we live in now. It doesn't take long at all before um, everybody's doing their own thing. So really limiting screen time um, because that robs intimacy. Intimacy is those just special bonding moments that you share with somebody significant. Um, and even if it's with your children or your neighbor or your friend or your parent or your sibling, doesn't have to be a spouse, a partner, a significant other. Um, screen time is wonderful if you control it, but if it controls you, it can damage the relationships around you. Um, for uh, couples, especially that are busy, um, agreeing to a scheduled sex schedule is important. Um, th this one, personally, I'm on the I'm on the fence with. I think I think scheduling um, sex is absolutely great for those that it benefits. But I also think it takes away a little bit of spontaneity and excitement and you know things like that. So. If you are a couple where absolutely scheduling sex is, is works for you, then schedule it, schedule it away. Um, however, in my personal opinion, I think spontaneity and um, uh, uniqueness in every area um, when it comes to intimacy and sex is, is beneficial. But you have to do you and you have to do what works in your relationship. Um, all right. Agreeing to go to therapy if needed. A lot of, I, I'm not even going to say who and what and where and when. Bottom line, if you need to talk to a professional, talk to a professional. We come into this world and the majority of our family of origin is our blueprint. So we think that's what's right. What's right may not necessarily be what's healthy. So if, if something's not working in your relationship, and especially if you're watching this and the coaching I do is a lot with infidelity, um, it would make sense for both parties to say, you know what, our train has been off the track. We need to go talk to somebody to help us get back on the track. If you guys want to reconcile and rebuild. And even if you don't, um, I strongly obviously encourage that you get some professional help for yourself. All right. Um, agreeing not to text serious stuff. Lord have mercy between punctuation, tone, grammar. You, I mean, there's a big difference between let's eat grandpa and let's eat grandpa. So often, actually, I, I read somewhere and it's true. We don't necessarily read what people write. We read our own interpretation of what people write. So a lot of times, if somebody who's very negative and vicious and nasty, they're reading a text, they're going to read it with that tone that's in their head. Or if somebody's a very upbeat, joyous, positive person reading a text, they're going to interpret that completely different. So really, serious stuff should not be conveyed in text, even in email if possible. Um, now, some couples really can't come together and have this face-to-face -face conversation for various reasons. So certainly email is better than no communication at all. But um, for serious stuff, we, we really need to come to the table because um, there's tone and there's grammar and there's pauses and there's things that are necessary to convey certain things that we, that, you know, we want to share and convey. Uh, the next thing is agreeing to allow professionals to fix things. You know, when I read this initially, I had to chuckle because I'm I'm going to be married going on 22 years, 22 years of marriage here. 
And I think the number one time I was on the verge of divorce, seriously, is we were trying to fix our treadmill. So, <laughs> I, oh my Lord, I lost my stuff. So, um, so I, when I read this, I was like, man, that is so true. When it comes to things that are above your pay grade, honestly, call a professional. It's not one of my favorite sayings in life is if it costs you your piece, the price is too high. I don't care. I would have gotten a new treadmill, um, as opposed to the horrible memory that I still have from, from trying to fix my treadmill with my spouse because, uh, it got intense. All right. Um, next one is, uh, define cheating. What is cheating? You know, um, I made a video one time a while ago and I, and I entitled it micro cheating and micro cheating is, you know, what I at the time considered, and, and I still do in a sense, but, um, uh, complimenting people on social media, you know, um, or DMing somebody, you know, sending them a private message, um, uh, you know, somebody you find attractive or they're wearing scantily clothes or something and you kind of, you know, are, are Googling them. Some couples could care less if you do that. Other couples like, no, that's a non-negotiable. That's cheating. So really define what is cheating, have clear cut goals. So that way, you know, there's no misunderstandings with um, conversations moving forward. Um. Agree to do a long-term to-do list. And this is things to do like, okay, this has to be done today. Um, a next to-do list is this should be done in the next week or two. And then long-term goals, you know, um, fixing dressers, uh, planning for college, um, retirement. So there's really a, you know, an immediate to-do list, a short-term and a long-term and both of you are on the same page. And what's nice about that, because actually we I do this in my own marriage. What's nice about that is one of us once in a while gets actually has time to do something on the short term list. So we do it and then just cross it off and then it's done. So it's really nice. Um, the next thing is, uh, which is number 11, if you're keeping track, 11 for this class, uh, is agree to go on more dates, you know, we 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 spend so much time in the beginning of relationships putting our best foot forward our best face forward we're patient we're kind we smile we um pursue we get pursued and then once we get established in our relationship and i understand it life comes in you got bills you got kids you got volunteer and church and work and all this other stuff and you, you don't have that same momentum and i get it but a garden is only going to give you the freshest fruit if you water it and tend to it or tend, tend it. So make sure you are tending to your garden. You are creating those date times. You are carving out those, those moments, those nights that are exclusively for you and your partner. Um, Write down or do some daily appreciations. Um, this could be done in a journal. And then you share it with your partner. This could be done at the end of the night, or if you can't do it at the end of the night, maybe at the end of the week. Hey, just want to tell you, you know, the other day I, I did A, B, and C. I will say, as for myself, one of the things I've been doing for years now is uh, each of us have a um, little tiny box on the uh, on the side of our end tables. And if we see each other doing anything that's nice, we just put it in that box. And then when we have time, could be, could be, five days a week. It could be once every three weeks. It all depends on what's going on during our, our life at that moment. We take something out of the box and it'll be like, you know, um, this is the day it happened. And, you know, I saw you tickling our daughter and both of you were laughing and that just warmed my heart. And I just wanted to let you know that. And it, and it causes for a nice memory. So write down, um, some of the things that you appreciate with your spouse, because it's so easy I can ask anybody watching this, give me a list of things that annoy you about your spouse. And man, immediately people will start ferociously writing. But once I say, give me a list of things you appreciate about, you know, your partner, your spouse, your significant other, or, you know, that you did when you were with them, you know, all of a sudden people pause and start thinking. So get in the habit of really training your brain to um, look out for these things. Uh, listen actively. You know, I always say we can't, we should not be listening to respond. We really need to be listening to understand.
so many times people are listening to respond, missing out on key and crucial um, things that, that our partner is trying to say. And this can go with anything. It could go with our neighbor, our children, our parents. We Really, we should be listening to understand, even if that means there's a rule where when one person stops talking, we have to wait one or two minutes before responding. So basically somebody says, somebody starts talking and you're talking and you're talking. And, it, and, and this is an established rule. When one person stops talking, you have to wait a minute or two before you respond. And that way you're, you're not eager to um, want to just trump what they say. You can come back after two minutes and say, you know what? I thought about what you just said and, and it actually makes sense. And you're right, duly noted, moving forward, I'm going to do that. I guess my perspective was A, B, and C. It just makes for, for a much more give and take, compassionate conversation. Um, write down criticisms. If you have some criticisms, instead of stating them, writing them down. Revisit them 24 hours later. If it's something that's still pressing, share it with your spouse or significant other partner when it's appropriate. Timing is everything. But... A lot of times when you sit on something for a day, you're like, you know what? This isn't worth even mentioning anymore. doesn't apply anymore. So write down your criticisms. Don't be so uh, quick to share them. Um, embrace the power of a timeout. And I just don't mean for your kids. If you have kids, I mean for yourself. I can't. I mean, this is something I use myself. I'm half Italian, half Irish. So I continually have an internal war within me. So I can't tell you how many times I tell my spouse, you know what? I'm getting heated. I need a timeout. And I remove myself for five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, you know? Um, I, so I recommend to a lot of my clients to do the same thing. Now, when you take a timeout, you don't have to say much at all. You just say, have to say, you know, I'm getting dysregulated. I'm getting heated. I'm getting escalated. I, I, I'm, I need to go, whatever. For those of you that are in relationships with people that have a neglect or abandoned past, you may need to include, or if you yourself have an abandonment or neglect past, you may need to include, I'm going in the living room for 20 minutes just so I can calm down. I'll come back and re we'll retable this. Or, you know, I'm going to go for a ride or I'm going to run to the store. I'll be back in two hours and because when you just leave somebody who has a past of a, a childhood neglect or abandonment and you don't say anything that could trigger that abandonment or, or neglect. And then you got bigger issues on your hands. So just something a side note. Um, all right. Uh, make time for check-ins. What does that mean? That means that, you know, if you have two minutes during the day when you're at work and you're just sitting at your desk, fiddling your thumbs, or if you have an hour on your lunch break, or if you have uh, time when you're on a flight, you know, going to a business meeting, check in. And a check in doesn't have to mean pick up the phone and have this long conversation. It could just be a text. Hey, about to board the plane. Just want to know you are the love of my life and I miss you. That's it. I mean, who doesn't want to feel like you are the prize in a relationship? So a check in could be pick up the phone or write a letter or an email or have but a check-in could also be a quick two-sentence text. Love you. Miss you. Just do those check-ins. I always say we are far more than human beings. We're human evolvements. We change. We grow. We learn. You're not the same person you are today than you were five years ago. You're not going to be the same person five years from today than you are now. You have to continually get to know the new self so if you're with somebody, that applies too. They're changing. You guys have to build bridges to each other. So these check-ins help build those bridges. Um, and uh, lastly, I'll just say this. Try to use I statements. So many times in conversations, we um, like to use our, our finger pointing. Um, you, 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 you. Try to use I statements. Um, I misunderstood. Um, I'm feeling this way. Um, I would prefer if this happens. It really cuts down on the other party feeling defensive because once somebody starts finger pointing or they hear accusations or, you know, you always do this and you, well, be careful for it with absolutes too, the always and the nevers. 
but just use I statements. I statements were really, really tame and calm um, any defenses and really will breed a healthier outcome in any conversation. So I hope some of these helps and you uh, apply them. And if you do, get me posted.